Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, Delia, here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law, Beatrice. What's up, everybody? How you doing, Beatrice? Hey, I'm here. I'm queer. I'm ready to talk VPR. There's a devil comet <laughs> heading right in our direction, apparently, along yeah. with some sort of a lunar and solar eclipse uh -huh. um, in the age of Aquarius plus Mercury retrograde. So Bitch. I know you're really anxious and worried about stuff. Are you all right to be here? Oh, I'm living this Aquarius energy. It's just going to be chaotic for yeah. the world for the next couple weeks. Okay, because yeah. it's not chaotic in the world now. It's going to be. It's going to get even more chaotic. Yeah. Okay. It's brace be. yourself and buy some diapers. Yes. I'm going to buy some diapers <laughs> over here. Yeah. Yep. Um, we are here to talk about Vanderpump rules. And yes. before we get into the episode, we do have to remind you to please hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say dumb things. We say bad words. And we will not apologize. Nope. And so if you're a sales of you get out of here if you, did, did you? <laughs> you might want to find yourself another dumpster yep. but if you are down to party and you like these two girls right here mm. well then welcome to this dumpster yeah and if you are down to party you better go follow us on instagram uh, yeah. at reality tv uh -huh. cringe and you better join us on patreon patreon.com slash reality tv cringe there's so much bonus content out there <laughs> ad free episodes <laughs> I mean, that's where the party's at. Yeah. Period. Period. And if you are watching on YouTube, please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe. I cannot understate or overstate. I can't I can't say enough. Yeah. How important it is that you do all of those things because it please. helps us to grow and we deserve it. We do. I feel like we deserve it. We want to be famous. Thank so. you in advance. Thank you. Okay, Vanderpump Rules. We do have a little bit of goss. Yeah, just a teeny bit. So I guess the reunion. Yeah. Was like last weekend. Yeah. And apparently something happened at the end of the reunion that was dramalicious and a little bit crazy. Yeah, specifically between Ariana and Lala. Apparently, Allegedly. Ariana goes off on Lala, like so much so that it ends their friendship is what everybody's yes. saying. Yes. I'm like, please. I think it was Bravo it Babe who said that Ariana eviscerates Lala. And you know, we like a nice word. Uh, we yes. like a nice fancy word. Yes. So she eviscerates Lala and their friendship is over forever. Now, Lala did speak out about this and she oh, said shit. only one of those things is true. Oh, not that she eviscerated me and our relationship is over, but just one of those things. Oh. And so I think she's implying that nobody eviscerated me, bitch. Oh. But that friendship is over interesting yes. i hope that the rest of the reunion is gonna, gonna be good suck. like everybody's saying like yep. it's gonna be garbage until the very end as usual it's gonna be like a three-part reunion like or 90 day four fiance. Part. sometimes they'll do a four part yeah like 90 day fiance <sighs> my god it's a whole month of bullshit oh my uh, god which we forgot to recap um 90 day fiance's tell -off. that's on you i mean that's First on all, you too We're i wasn't partnership. built i wasn't built for this 90 Day Fiance tell all world. I mean, me neither. I, watched I told you it. straight up, I'm not into it. I watched like the last one and it was horrible. Garbage. Was absolutely terrible. Yeah. My thoughts on YouTube recapped it. So just fucking go watch hers. Yeah. My thoughts. Yeah. Queen. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But we don't have to do it. No. I think everybody's tired of it. I'm and over it. And we're moving on. We're in VPR now. Yeah. We're in Seeking Sister Wife now. Yeah. We're in the valley. Yeah. We don't need to go backwards. No, we don't. Beatrice. <laughs> All right, so that's what we know about VPR reunion. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we're going to get some drama. Yeah, please. Uh, and uh, let's get into this episode. Take it away, Beatrice. All right. We start this episode with Sandoval again planning some stupid get together with his weird NPC friends that aren't actually his <laughs> friends. He's doing some singles pool party or whatever broke at the house. Down, busted, oh sexy singles God. pool party. His lonely ass, oh broke God. ass, ho ass party. Goblins in the pool. It's so cringe. It's so funny to watch like extroverted people like this, especially Sandoval, who's a narc, who like so desperately need social connection and interaction with people that they'll do it with literally anybody yeah very like, very weird the bottom of the barrel people just to get like their fix like i'm the complete opposite i'm such an introvert leave like, me alone right now don't fucking talk to me i need my alone time let me be at my home like yep. i, I do don't like better people. at 
by myself. I don't want to see people. No. I don't want to be around people. No. Fuck people. And most people don't hold like a good conversation. So I'm just like, yeah. why? Why do you want to make small talk with people who like literally don't care? They're just there for the clout too. Right. It's so obvious. But anyway. Acting like they don't know who your roommate is. Yeah. Or that they right. don't know who you are. Oh, by the way, like this is my roommate's house with me. Like it's Ariana Maddox. Cringe. Okay. Cringe. And meanwhile, Ariana is getting ready to leave the house because she's like, I'm not about to be here with this weird, cringy, broke down, 40 year old singles party with this <laughs> loser Tom Sandoval. She's FaceTiming Katie, who Katie is about to go to lunch with Lala. Right. And try and, you know, mend things from their fight last episode. Right. So Ariana leaves. Sandoval does his party. We'll get to it. Katie goes to have lunch with Lala. Yes. Which was kind of interesting because I like the way that Katie and Lala kind of talk sometimes. Like they're very direct people. They may not always be right, obviously. They may be cunty sometimes. Yes. They may be totally shitty. To be sure. But I do like and appreciate that direct like kind of honesty like as opposed to somebody like sheena who just likes to talk shit about everybody and not actually be honest about how she feels about everything and then she takes everything personal right and she wants other people to fight her battles yes yeah. my primary thought about this was that katie did not need to apologize to lala for anything agreed i mean i think she was very gracious talking about giving somebody grace i think yeah. she was very gracious to lala who is seeming to coming to come to terms in her life with the reality that she needs to change the way she presents. Yeah. She says she needs to soften, which basically means she needs to stop screaming and assaulting people verbally. Right. Which means soften. Yeah. In order to like not be on the war path like Katie. Did you notice that she said that though? She's like, I'm trying to I'm trying to be a softer, kinder person, but here's Katie on her war path being angry, being mean, and I don't want to be that way. Like, okay, even when trying to describe how you want to evolve and get better, you're throwing somebody under the bus because yep. you're inherently toxic. Yep. And then she requests Katie to be softer with her, like as if Katie was being harsh. And I'm like, she, I mean, she wasn't really. I mean, she came off kind of strong. She was matching her energy. Exactly. Lala walked into the astrology party. Hot. On one. Yeah. She was on one. Yep. And Katie's like, Calm the fuck down. Yeah. And if you don't, I'm going to make you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Lala's not used to that. No, she's not, which is very interesting to see. Because like I've said throughout these recaps, like I like Lala. I think she's very pretty. I like the way that she kind of handles things. But at the same time, I'm like, last couple episodes, you're kind of going crazy, chick. Mm -hmm. Like calm down a little bit. So I understand what you were saying when you were recapping like the all the prior seasons. Lala has a... Mm -hmm. Lala's got something wrong with her sometimes. I mean... Uh... We're not here to diagnose anybody, but let me do it anyway. No, <laughs> like she's just got like sh her personality is a, it can get there's swings going on. Yeah. There's mood swings that are happening. Yeah. And she doesn't know how to filter herself so that she can have a productive conversation and tell people how she's actually feeling without becoming angry. Yeah. And like shutting down the entire thing, which is what I think Katie was trying to combat. She's like, don't come so hard. Right. For Ariana, like. It's not that deep. Right. We're here to fucking learn about our rising signs and our moon signs. What the fuck? Yeah. Calm down a little bit. Take a chill pill. Did you notice Lala said something like, I don't want us to ever get to the point where we say something we can't recover from? Yes. Which I actually kind of related to because I'm the kind of person like I'm very reactive. I've got that Aries move, which oh, Katie you're telling does me. too. You're telling me. Bitch. Don't make me catch. Don't make me. <laughs> oh, wow. No, but for, I mean, I'm the kind of person that's very reactive. And I ha I've i learned with yeah. my age that I have to like think about how I feel about things before I say anything because I can say some fucked up shit. I could be very mean. So I kind of related to these girls because they both were like, yeah, let's try to not pop off mm -hmm. on each other because we don't want to say anything that would literally ruin our friendship. Right. So I like that. They kind of make up. They hug. They apologize. It's whatever. I liked also that Katie acknowledged that that's her problem area too is tone yeah. and delivery. Yes. Tone and delivery is where I need to work. So she seems to understand that about herself because trust me when I tell you, I mean, I know that Katie is in her glory era right now, but yeah. there were seasons upon seasons where she was absolutely a twat. Oh, I believe it. She was a twat. Yeah. And she was fucking hard to talk to and she was a terrible person, but also a good person, nuanced. There's sides to everybody. So I like to see Katie acknowledging that she's got this 
thing that she needs to work on and that she's doing that work. Good. Yeah, I do like that. And this is the kind of energy that we would like to see from fucking Sandoval. Right. Even though he's doing all of his journaling, I'm like, I have yet to mm-hmm. see you actually admit your faults, dude. Mm. I don't think he's admitted shit. I think he said the words. Now, like, let me qualify this. So let me qualify this. I I know he said the words. They're on camera. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. That was wrong. I mean, he said the words, but there's something different about when he says it than somebody like, for example, Katie, who you can tell she's doing the work, the introspection to figure herself out. Like he's just saying the words so he can get a result. Katie's like, I'm saying the words and doing the work so I can have a better life and be at peace. Right. That's not what Sandoval wants. Nope. But even though he's journaling. The reason he's spinning out in this episode and others is because he thinks he's made amends. Yeah. He thinks, I've said sorry. What the fuck is the problem? Yeah. I'm not going to keep groveling in front of you guys. Why are you guys I did keep what I was that? supposed to do? No, Mm-mm. Tom. Nope. That's not how you do it. Nope. Not at all. Let's get to Tom at his stupid party. His lame oh ass God. party. I am cringy. It is cringy. Like it's like a total pool party. Schwartz shows up for like five minutes and already feels like uncomfortable about it because he realizes the kind of party it is. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of single people. It's Sandoval single and he's trying to get back out there like Ew. a fucking 40 year old creep. Ew. I'm like stop dude. Oh. You have no game whatsoever you're a loser everybody knows that you're a chronic serial cheater nobody wants to be with you except if they're chasing clout and want to be on television and so you have your perpetual goblins like billy lee and that (laughs) kyle guy yeah um and like that other jason guy or whatever his name is like the people who want to be on camera and who want to make their way onto the show yeah are the ones that are injecting themselves into these scenes and tom's okay with it because he's got nobody else yeah he has nobody at all. And then these two blonde chicks come up. Randos. I'm like, who God are they? Them. Nobody cares. <laughs> I don't care about them. The nobody only, cares about them. Only reason why they're interesting is because they get in the pool and they start talking with Sandoval and Sandoval's trying to flirt, I guess. Is that what that was? I mean, he's kind of alluding to it. He's like, I haven't flirted with anybody in, you know, so long, almost 10 years. I'm like, what were you doing with Rachel? Yeah, you were flirting. And what about the other chicks that you banged? Right. You were flirting. Like, shut the fuck up, dude. You're not like some dude that's been in this long-term relationship this whole time and you don't know how to date. You do. You've yeah. been fucking people this whole entire time. Yeah. So shut up. But he starts talking to these girls like a fucking weirdo. Yeah. He's like, yeah, it's <laughs> totally. my ex's house. Does not have any awareness Ugh. of like what a turbo old man he is. <laughs> I know. Like he thinks he's he thinks he's bringing it. Oh, yeah. He thinks he's so fucking fly yeah. and so hot. He's like, I'm in the pool with my Heineken one. I mean, this is all mine. You can have all of this. And I'm like, you are so cringe. He is so People weird. are laughing at you across the world. And you can see it on these randos' faces. These girls are like uncomfortable. Ew. They're like, are you a predator? Like, you're fucking The answer weird. is yes. Yeah. Allegedly. He's like sitting there trying to make jokes about the fact that he still lives with his ex. He's like, yeah, it's my, you know, maybe my ex still live here, but you know, it's no big deal. Just a nine-year relationship that we got over. I cheated on her. Like, you probably know. Like, well, he didn't say that. Well. that would mean he's taking responsibility for his shit and everybody knows everybody, and those girls know yeah so why are you acting dumb yeah why are you acting like you don't know who this person is and why you're there like okay yep i hate this manufactured shit i mean it's really cringy but like in the after show this was where it was kind of interesting i actually watched the after show this week me too pat myself on the back um for doing my job but <laughs> no on the after show they're watching all this back and ariana comments on it and she's like this whole scene is super disrespectful like he's using cups that were gifted to me when he's like drinking his drinks and stuff in the pool he's talking bad about me with these jokes that he's making and it's just really fucked up that he's saying this but this just proves it's testament to the kind of piece of shit that sandoval actually Mm -hmm. is i'm like oh man this guy yeah he's never gonna be able to come back up i mean it's feeling like it's irredeemable yeah like katie says it's giving audacity and that's for sure but it's like can he come back from this and like i'm just gonna admit I started this season saying there are things that I like about Tom Sandoval. Again, yeah. I've been watching from the very beginning. He has likable traits. Everybody does. Like, And there was a part of me that's like rooting for him to do the right thing in the right way and like bring it back together. I, right. I, there was a part of me that felt that way. That is dead and gone. <laughs> I honestly, I can't. He's no. so superficial and so 
shallow and so unwilling, and I say this a lot, and I'm sorry if I'm a broken record, but like to sit in the energy of the harm that he's done to other people and to himself. Like he is skating around that. Yep. Anything not to touch that. Yep. And not to feel that and own it. Yeah. So he's saying he's owning all this shit, but like, no, you're not. You're just waiting for people to get over it. And you're surrounded by vapid assholes like Sheena, who is also waiting to get over it. Yes, which is very interesting. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll get to that later when she talks about her friendship with uh, Sandoval with Ariana. But like, yeah, it's super bizarre to watch. Like, he's a classic narcissist. Even I was watching it with your daughter last night. She's like, what the heck, dude? Mm -hmm. This guy is deluded. Like, he really thinks he's doing the work with his pages and pages of journaling i'm like what are you writing in there well he's showing it to the camera didn't you read it well i so didn't read that it. just calls into question the authenticity of his journaling exactly. if he's willing to show his sacred secret thoughts <laughs> to the world yeah it's all performative it is there's nothing there that's real nope that's wild to me yep. maybe he's scared to show his real self because he's just been like through a very traumatic scandal event which you could kind of understand but like the way he's dealing with it is really bad. It is very bad, very unhealthy. So after the party or whatever, I think it's like the next day or something, he's like working out and he's talking about his assistant, Anne. And the only reason why I bring this up mm -hmm. is because he talks about the other duties that Anne is responsible for, which is housekeeping. Right. And he's like, yeah, she just picks up my mess every now and then when I can't get to it. And then the producers show all these scenes of like how much Pan of a trash goblin he is. Yeah. It's a fucking sty and he's making Anne do this. Yeah. And we talked about this last episode about like whether or not Anne was maybe turning her opinion or changing her mm -hmm. opinion about Sandoval maybe coming over to Ariana this would be the reason. Yes. If I was his assistant, I'm like having to manage your whole life and I have to do housekeeping. Right. Oh, go fuck yourself, dude. Absolutely. Seriously. Yeah. Team uh, Anne. Yes. Save Anne. Save Anne. Free <laughs> Anne. Please. And then we have Sheena coming over to talk with Ariana about Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Yeah. And this is where Sheena's finally trying to be honest with Ariana about how she feels and try to clear the air because before this, Sheena was talking to Lisa Vanderpump and then Lisa Vanderpump was talking to Ariana. So it was like just this whole game of telephone. Yeah. Just go to Ariana and tell her just how you feel. Is that just her. crazy? I mean, why Ugh. can't you do that? But again, this whole scene is cringe as fuck because I don't know why Sheena cares so much about Dancing with the Stars. Because she's a narc. Because she's a loser. Because <laughs> she doesn't have anything else. Ugh. There's nothing like of uh, true meaning inside of herself that motivates her. It's all outward. It's, it's all fucking celebrity. It's all fame. Ma, ma, ma. It is embarrassing. It is giving so much cringe. I'm like, girl, stop talking about Dancing with the Stars. And then on the fucking after show. They talk about it again. Yeah. And then Sandoval Tom, breaks it up. Tom. Yeah. Oh I actually took God. ballroom dancing lessons because I too feel like I should be on Dancing with the Stars, which is totally giving, inserting himself into Ariana's cocktail book circa 2017 or whatever yes. year that was. Like he also wants to chase the fame. I, it's crazy. I mean, this again, I have to say to you, like, does, do, do they not have this filter where they're able to see what they're thinking and then stop themselves before they say words that are so cringe like that? No. Like you can feel that that's okay. Everybody does. But like to say that out loud on camera, like three times, Sheena, and then now Tom Sandoval, like Tom, get a grip. I know. Do you hear what you're saying? <laughs> you guys are a bunch of washed up losers. I'm yeah. sorry, but I'm are. like, it's they so are. fucking sorry. cringe. They and they like, totally are. every time I hear them talk about Dancing with the Stars, I just think about the fact that I haven't had cable in like <laughs> eight years. And I don't even remember the last time I watched I've Dancing with watched the Stars. It. Apparently it's a thing. I mean, it used to be very popular, but I'm like, it's still going on. Who the fuck yes. watches that? And no offense to any <laughs> of y'all that actually watch it and love the show. That's great Maybe for you. Maybe it's awesome. Maybe it's super popular, but I just can't imagine a world where it's like <laughs> so famous and so amazing that these people want to be on it because they think they'll get far i'm like most of the time when these d-list f-list celebrities get on dancing with the stars they'll make it like two rounds and yeah. then they're irrelevant again like, <laughs> right it's, it's like what's the point of being on it's it? like the masked singer yeah have you seen that yes. where they dress up as rando things and mm -hmm. then they sing 
I mean, I it feels very congratulatory and masturbatory to the celebrity class or to the D-list celebrity class. Like yeah. something that they do amongst themselves to succeed oh, in their own God. fucking peerage or their God. peer group. It's really cringe. I don't get it. But I mean, if people like the show, that's fine. That's great. But Sheena, get over it. Oh, my God. And her primary gripe, as she says. Yeah. This episode. Yeah. Is that Ariana didn't tell her directly that she got it. And Ariana's like, there is something called an NDA and like a a binding legal agreement where I'm not supposed to say it. And we see her in the after show saying there were rumors that were going around and people were already talking about it. And I almost lost my spot on Dancing with the Stars. So, yeah, I couldn't just tell people. Right. By the time Dan tells Sheena when Sheena goes to pick him up at the airport, it's because it's already been out. She just hasn't heard it yet. So Sheena feels entitled to priority in Ariana's life. I don't but get it. what are you giving in return? Um, Nothing. Betrayal yep. because you're hanging out with Tom Sandoval. Yes. And she brings it up in this conversation again after fucking Dancing with the Stars. She's like, well, you know, what if in several years I decide to be friends with Sandoval because I feel like he's doing the real work with all of his journaling and he's actually healing and changing as a person. And Ariana just gives her kind of a look and she's like, that's cool like whatever but in her talking head she says i feel like sheena's just saying all of this stuff because it's inevitable that she wants to be best she's friends soft with him. launching her new relationship yes. with tom sandoval and actually what ariana says to her on the couch is something like well i mean but i'm worried for you because he's a terrible person like you're in danger girl yeah like, be careful with the people that you're hanging around with for fucking clout right so that's what I would think if you came to me in several years um, or several months or several weeks, which is what Sheena's going to do. 100%. And no matter how many times you tell Sheena that Sandoval's a piece of shit, she's not going to listen. Mm-mm. And we see that on the preview from last week. Like there's going to be some weird black tie event party or whatever. And Sheena has another conversation with Sandoval being like, do you even care about me? The answer is no. Yeah, it's always been no. Duh, stupid bitch. (laughs) And then we get some weird scene after this with Schwartz and Joe again. I don't care. I can't tell you how deeply I don't care. I don't know why she's on the show so much. What's happening? Are the producers desperate for content? Are they desperate for a storyline for Schwartz? Like, what are we doing? I have to tell you, I saw Joe post on her instagram which she only has like three thousand followers we have more followers than her because we're we're famous famous. but anyway comparatively famous she posted like a montage video of all these videos and pictures of her and schwartz with this long unhinged paragraph of like how much she loved him and how she may not be the right girl for him but he deserves like the world and he's such a good person and she he just gets her and they just have like such a good relationship and all this stuff and all the comments are like girl you're desperate for this dude who like literally does not care about you you're just a pity fuck to him like all the comments are just roasting her well she shouldn't be roasted i don't think i mean well there are some things um in her character that can be called into question like how she just dumped katie or dumped Kristen. because Kristen talks about that in the after show she was best friends with Kristen. like as soon as she got with tom she ghosted her friendships but at the same time there's just something and i'm just gonna say it it might be inappropriate don't come at me bro but there's something about her that reads a little unstable and definitely if it's not unstable there's something going on in the internal world where she doesn't really have a whole lot of self-worth and she seeks validations through connections with other people like we see her with ali in the weird this fucking scene i'm like why are we doing this why are we doing this but she there's a lot going on inside of her and i feel bad for her because she doesn't know any better than not to try and be with a guy like tom schwartz tom schwartz is never gonna pick you he's already picked the 22 year old at 41 years old himself a fucking perpetual failure is picking a 21 year old you're never gonna be good enough he's never gonna choose you and yet you continue to praise him on your instagram and chase him and it's actually sad and you should want better for yourself than aw shucks tom schwartz and so Again, it's a nuanced argument, but I actually feel bad for her. And I feel like she's coming across really sad on VPR, honestly. A little bit. And I feel bad for her because Schwartz constantly, every scene with her, he's like, yeah, she's just my best friend. Like he does not want any kind of like connotation. Why do you think that is? I, I don't know. Like maybe he's ashamed to be with her. Maybe their sex is super weird. Like he just fucks her when he like is horny that's what i think like i think they have a really 
fucked up friends with benefits type of scenario where she's like actually in love with him i mean she's like crashing and she seems living in love with him at his apartment it's super she seems weird. in love with him i think that he is vapid and he wants a supermodel i think that she is not although she's definitely pretty she's but she's just a she's just a regular schmegular girl who's in love with him and so he bangs her he uses her she's in love with him she doesn't know how to quit him yep and as soon as he gets a 22 year old which he did or 24 year old he ditches her yeah and she just pretends like she's okay with it yeah like where he's my friend i want him to be happy what about you yeah what about you girl stop fucking him it is giving infiltration which yes. katie says in a later episode, episode. Like, are you just trying to get into the friend group yeah it's never gonna happen well and outside like, of tom she references katie in this scene too on the paddle boat with shorts like katie is jealous of hers what she says and i'm like I don't know if it's that. Like, I think Katie doesn't like her because she does spend a lot of time with Schwartz and maybe she does know their weird fucked up history and their past and stuff that Schwartz does fuck her a lot. And so maybe that's why Katie doesn't like her, which is understandable. She was married to Schwartz, but I don't think it's out of jealousy. I think she just thinks that there's something off with Joe. I think Katie's a little hard on Joe. Like she acts like she's she called her a crackhead, yes. and anorexic, and that's not right. No, and that's actually mean. And again, that is indicative of the way that Katie fights. Yeah. But at the same time, Katie's also telling Tom in a later scene in this episode that she was actually in love with Tom when she divorced him. Yes. Like I loved him. I was in love with him, but I made the choice not to fucking cheat on him because I was unhappy yeah. and I, I made the choice to divorce him. I walked away from a relationship with a guy that I loved. So in such proximity to that, like within, I don't know, three months he's banging Joe. Of course she has feelings around that. On Watch What Happens Live mm-hmm. this last Tuesday, Katie was on and she actually said like now after a year or a year and a half or whatever it is, she's like, yeah, they, they actually have a cool energy together. They're kind of huh. quirky. They seem like they're friends. I mean, maybe maybe they'll be great. Yeah. So she seems over it because she was still in love with Schwartz when and this was happening. that would make sense. Yeah. That would make sense. Her feelings are justifiable. Now, her calling her a crackhead, probably not. Anorexic, wrong. Yeah, very yeah. wrong. But yeah, we feel bad for Joe. And then... But later, also, Joe, you're a little shady and you're moving weird in these streets. Well, and stop fucking Schwartz. He's never going to pick you ever. Does his dick work? Watch Joe, the movie. He's just not that into you. Can you send a DM and tell us if his dick works? Because I mean, I've been under the impression his dick don't really work he on He calls me. her Joseph. They're it's weird. weird. They're weird. I think he said in the after show that he could or maybe it was in this show he said i could marry yes. her was it in this show it was it was in this scene he's like i feel like i could marry her and be happy with her but i won't because i want to be single like okay that's a weird thing that to is a very say. strange thing and it's almost like he wants to string her along maybe that's what it is maybe mm-hmm. he gets enjoyment out of that there are guys that like to do that oh believe me i know yeah yeah And then after that weird paddle boat scene, then everybody meets up at some bar or whatever. And this was interesting because Ariana shows up in the same vicinity as Tom Sandoval. So Tom Sandoval's there. Did you say vicinity? Vicinity. Oh my God. Vicinity. I know. Okay. I just thought, I mean, I look for opportunities to help you to be better. Yeah. You just want to call me out on my wordplay. Whatever. Vicinity. Of Tom Sandoval. Listen to tell. I said it wrong because I'm stuffed up. Okay. Bitch. Um, <laughs> Ariana shows up at the bar with Tom Sandoval. Schwartz is there. Lala, Katie. Everybody's there. And I'm snoring. And it's kind of boring. The only thing that's kind of interesting is that Sheena goes to talk with Schwartz at some point about Sandoval or whatever. And then Sandoval comes in conveniently. And then Sheena tries to talk to Sandoval about Rachel and Katie. And Katie. And tells him that he needs to own up to his part and everything. And then, of course, Sandoval, in true Sandoval fashion, gets all defensive immediately. And Sheena tries to, you know, call him out on it. She's like, you need to stop letting your ego get in the way. And this is where Sandoval throws a fit and leaves. It's not my ego. <laughs> it is not my ego. And it's as he's storming out, you, you. James is like, dude, chill out. You have to, like, deal with these relationships. And he's like, I don't have to grovel in front of these assholes anymore. I'm out. And then we see his actual outfit. Yeah. And his blue linen pants or something. Like, what are you wearing, Tom? So you're with your fucking lightning <laughs> earring. Know. I'm like, okay, 41 year old. <laughs> he's so has lame. been midlife crisis. Painted toenails. Having ass. I can't with him. Uh, and then we have some weird scene with Brock and Sheena fighting about 
their nannies and shit. I don't shit. care. Nobody literally, literally don't care. But I will nobody say nobody cares. In all fairness, because I will admit when I'm wrong, which is so rare, but I'll admit it. I didn't hate Brock as much. Really? In this scene, yeah, I felt like he seemed more reasonable trying to talk to Sheena about getting somebody to help. And Sheena seemed a little bit more reactive. And I can only imagine what it's like to be married to her. Their daughter is adorable. And I didn't hate him. All I'm, I don't like him. I'm just saying I don't hate him as much as I normally do. Oh, huh, that's interesting. Because yeah. he kind of seemed like he was coming off hard on uh, Sheena about wanting a consistent schedule. Less also, hard. Sheena is like just kind of brushing off his concerns That's like, a true. lot of the time. So it's kind of like they don't have the healthiest dynamic. They're going to break up soon. I hope we get to see it. So wait, let me ask you. So huh? it seems like his argument is that Sheena's schedule is irregular, which yeah. means his schedule is necessarily irregular because he's covering for her when she's not there. Yeah. So that means if my schedule is irregular, I can't really do the business man stuff that I'm supposed to because I'm a businessman yeah. who builds businesses. I've got a career. Okay. Yeah, whatever. Okay, is that what his gripe is? Yeah, it seems like it. And I mean, he has been bugging her for wanting like a nanny and wanting something. So they can date though and be closer. But now, yeah, but so now it's his career. What that tells me or what it validates and verifies for me is that he don't work. No, nope. He don't got a job. It's all on Sheena's shoulders. It's based on her schedule, her podcasting, her filming, all the things that she's got going on. And when she has time to be home, then he can go out and work on his app or his home fitness bullshit maybe so he ain't doing shit no he's not maybe he feels emasculated by that too and be- he should i mean yeah i'm sorry that's rude well, he shouldn't you should no you but should there be. are plenty of i'm so I'm so fucking toxic. so fucking mean you should really call me out of my bullshit that's okay he can be a stay-at-home dad sure she can be the primary bed w- breadwinner but i just don't like how he has shamed her yes for like the difficulties that OCD. she has had yeah but yeah. I, I take it back I'm sorry. I'll try not to do that. You again. just said you liked Brock, and then now you're telling. I, him. I said I didn't hate him. Yeah, that's different from I like him. You said you liked him more this episode. I said I didn't hate him as much. I roll the tapes. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Let's fight. I apologize. Okay. Um, and then after that weird scene with Brock and Sheena, then we're back at Tom and Ariana's house. Katie's there, and Tom is working out upstairs. You know, working out his gains <laughs> like a loser <laughs> on this You're fucking a loser, treadmill. Baby. Oh my god! So the only reason why this was interesting was because ultimately Sandoval talks to Katie and apologizes. Well, Desi tries Do you see to what I'm apologize. Saying? He's saying the yes, words, but he doesn't mean it, but he's not feeling the words. Yeah. He doesn't know what the charge in the words ought to be. Yes. He's performing. Yes. He's a fucking puppet. It's all an act. Yep. It's all an act. And the whole like reason why he decides to go talk to Katie is because there's been like this talk or whatever around that Sandoval feels like he's being blamed for the demise of Schwartz and Katie's marriage, which is not what's being said. Mm -hmm. Katie just talks about how he kind of had a hand in it. He it wasn't the cause, obviously, but like the bar was because Schwartz was focused way too much on the bar and in the after show I thought this is interesting because the guys are talking about this and Schwartz actually does take accountability for that Mm -hmm. like we haven't seen that on these episodes yet really because he keeps talking shit about Katie and every interstitial he's not really like taking any ownership for why their marriage broke up but on the after show he's like yeah like the bar was really the main issue like I didn't focus any of my time on her and it really took a toll on our marriage and that's mm-hmm. why it broke up so i right. thought that was interesting yep. from schwartz even mm-hmm. though he's an aw shucks loser sandoval dick sucker he at least is trying <laughs> dirty, to take dirty dick a counter- dirty dick sucker right? i mean yeah dirty dick yeah gobbling that dick <laughs> <laughs> i'm just oh saying God. so it's kind of interesting but anyway katie ends up being in the same room as sandoval she's on her phone like not paying attention to him at all got a stink resting bitch face doesn't she i mean i love it though she's beautiful so beautiful. i love her short hair me too she looks so good do you with think it? i could pull that off yeah do it okay oh god you're not a good friend you're no, not. not a good friend <laughs> bangs and a little bob no ma'am i mean bangs would look good on you though but you would have to style them and yeah it's yeah. a pain in it's the, the whole ass thing. Yeah. yeah anyway anyway Sandoval comes down and Sandoval's like, even though I don't feel like I'm in his talking head, he's like, even though I don't feel like I'm at fault for their marriage ending, I'm still going to apologize. Because 
Because Sheena told him to at the bar. Yes, exactly. Because Sheena told him. Because I care about Sheena so much, I'm going to apologize. Or because he needs somebody else to give him a map to redemption because yep. he couldn't come up with that shit himself. So he's going to take Sheena's vapid advice. Katie didn't want to hear it. No. Nope. I would know that if I were him. I'd be like, Katie doesn't give a shit yep. what I have to say. 100%. So he goes up to Katie. He's like, oh, I just want to say I'm sorry for like hurting you. And like, I hope that we can be friends eventually. And she's like, Okay, I'm. I don't believe you at all. For a second, <laughs> <laughs> you're full of shit, and you don't take any accountability at all, and you're a piece of shit. And I don't really regard words as change. No. I regard actions as change. So we're gonna need to see, see some action from you. Yep. And take some accountability. He's like, I have been. Like I've totally been taking it. <laughs> accountability and i've been saying words out of my mouth people have heard them didn't okay. you hear them and she's like mm, okay i don't care and then he's like why don't you just give me a little grace and she literally no 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 so good. i love that that was like so good so good <laughs> chef's kiss perfect queen shit for I mean, real <laughs> i love it and i don't think he was expecting it no. like i think he thinks that he can walk over people especially the girls because sheena's proving that like sheena is very easily manipulated lala, by sandoval lala and lala surprisingly too. Yep. yep all because he says he's sober that's the only reason why lala yep. thinks yes. that he's genuine because he's sober now and he's journaling so yeah katie doesn't take <laughs> him seriously at all he's like well fine then like whatever and then stomps off and goes right. upstairs he's, but he said you look pretty or yeah you look good that's it yeah that is it she's like thanks <laughs> bye bye bitch. bye bitch and then later sandoval's journaling in his room again and schwartz comes over and he's like oh you're journaling man and sandoval's like yeah it's like really good for my mental health like i journal every day look see this is april 5th <laughs> this is april 4th i'm like oh my god it's just like a homework assignment it's terrible it's really yeah, cringe yeah, it's terrible and then sandoval starts crying again because he journals well, a lot because about they're rachel. looking at pictures of rachel Ugh. okay these pictures are very evocative Ugh. they take him back in time whatever a time when him and rachel were making out and she was doing like shaving cream on her <laughs> bits and it was just like from friday night lights wasn't that what he said yeah it's like fucking varsity blues varsity yeah. blues and it was just like a moment and it was so fucking strong it was a moment that changed my life Ugh. and i'm never not ever gonna get that back no you're not so he goes into the closet and he starts to cry <laughs> again the glycerin tears again and, <laughs> like we hear him sob a little i know like i don't believe i don't believe it at crying. all i mean it's good acting but i don't believe it at all it's man. not good acting well no i mean and tom is just sitting in the fucking chair like you all right man are we really like, doing this right out. now are you crying in the closet yeah God. i think schwartz says something like you're at the tail end of this. Like, it's going to be okay. Like, he's trying to be a bro. And Sandoval's like, no, I'm not. Everybody's treating me you like Scott understand. Peterson. Yeah. Scott Peterson. And Schwartz is like, you mean the guy who murdered his wife? And Tom says, allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> I'm like, does this dude. Actually, he was convicted. And so we can say it. Yes. Yeah. But does this but dude just... not think about what he says? <sighs> You're comparing yourself to OJ Simpson and George fucking Floyd and now a literal murderer. <laughs> like, oh my. <laughs> God. You're getting closer. Warmer? <laughs> yeah. Warmer? Psychopaths. I know. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Well, not George Girth. Floyd, but yeah. 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 But oh my God. I'm yeah. just like, this guy is absolutely wild. And he's feeling destructive. Yes. He's really feeling destructive as he's putting on his fashion and his God. fucking clothes. With his, his painted nail polish. Painted nail, painted, I can't which get Jax over it. ends up calling him out on. I, I was know. shocked when Jax calls him out. I'm like, oh my God, Beatrice is going to love that. Oh, this is the last scene. It's like all the guys go out to yeah. dinner and Jax shows up. Well, it's not the last scene because Ariana has a party at her house. Where well, we yeah, learn, they play Never Have Her But ever. we learn about her having an orgy with John Mayer. Not her. I thought that was Sheena. That's what I meant. Sorry, yeah. Sheena. Sheena. Sheena had an Sheena, orgy Sheena, with yeah. Brock. She said it was. She didn't have an orgy with Brock. This no, was, she said it, Brock was no, there. No, it was. It was 2008. Oh, she was with John Mayer, and she says her body was a wonderland. And Brock said that he was in a threesome with two guys, but then he goes That's on right. to elaborate in the after show that it's like two girls, two guys. So it was like swingers or uh -huh. something like that. Uh -huh. Anyway, so there is a party yeah. that happens at Ariana's house. And that was the most interesting thing that was divulged. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. I didn't realize she was referencing John Mayer. Yeah. Her she body said an A-list celebrity. And I'm like, yeah. is he an A-list celebrity? Even 
vis-a-vis an orgy, she's chasing clout. Uh, 1,000%. Wasn't, it, yeah, he was at the time. I mean, yeah, but like, I wouldn't call him a, ce- I mean, I guess a celebrity. And Maybe. he was like with Jessica Simpson. That's right. Like he like, dated a lot of A-list that's ladies. True. He was known to be a Lothario who had a good dick game, honey. That's true. And he could sing. Yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, I like it's one that, of his albums. It's that Jack Johnson bullshit. I'm just like, can I go to bed now? <laughs> going to You're bed. You're so fucking judgy. I am judgy. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Well then after the never have I ever dumb party yeah. at Ariana's house, then all the guys go out to dinner at some steakhouse again. And it's Brock, James, Sandoval, Schwartz, and then eventually Jack shows up. And this is when it gets actually interesting because Jax, who hasn't been on the show yet, I thought it was kind of cool though, like that they're doing all these crossovers between this and the yeah. valley. Like I really do like that. I enjoy it. Um, Jack shows up and he's got kind of like a hot energy, not like hot, like ooh, sexy, but like he's hot headed already. Oh, hot headed. Like yeah. high on coke. It was interesting to watch the cameras following him into Tom Tom because like people were actually turning around and going, oh, it's Jack Oh my God. And like looking at the cameras, like it was such a moment and he's walking in and all his glory. I'm returning from my fucking sexist and racist <laughs> bullshit. You can't keep me down. He's walking into the private with room swagger. with all these guys. Truly looking coked up allegedly the facts whole face red his nose all red i'm just like here we go yep here we go and i think schwartz is like oh maybe they could be friends him and sandoval so like have they had beef before sandoval and jack oh, yeah well they fought through the duration of uh, vanderpump okay Rules, but they used to be roommates in miami i want to say yeah and they have known each other for years and were very very close like best friends and so Sexually? sandoval that's your gay conspiracy again but sandoval schwartz and Jax have known each other for many years and they've been through a lot and once again i say Jax slept with Kristen, who right. was at the time with tom sandoval who was probably sleeping with ariana which she just recently acknowledged mm. um while Jax was with stassi so it's like oh all God. this fucking intersection it's like that meme with the guy yeah. the fucking strings and stuff like that there's a lot of sexual fluids that have been exchanged so Ew. they go way back wow they go way back because that made sense because i was like okay there's already tension in the air and i guess that's because Jax was like on a couple podcasts or whatever oh, yeah. talking shit about sandoval during the whole scandal thing and let me just say he yes. also made an appearance at the time on watch what happens live where he oh. just dragged tom oh my and God. was 100 percent coming out as team ariana which we love and endorse but he was i, I he was doing it for himself. Uh, sure. He was doing it so that he could be on TV again. Yeah. And he was doing it so that he could get another in back into Bravo. And guess what? It worked. I mean, now he's now got a whole show. He's got the valley. Yep. Wow. On Sandoval's back. I will tell you that. On Sandoval's back. On Ariana's back. He now has a show. What a clout goblin. Oh, that he's is the worst. Crazy. He's the worst of them all. Oh, my God. So insidious. Yes. Well, I mean, I did enjoy him calling out Sandoval during this dinner, though, because he's just kind of like going in him. He's like, man, dude, he's like, you look a lot better in person because on social media, <laughs> so I saw a couple of pictures where you looked old and f- you washed look 50. up. <laughs> you look like you were 50 years old. That was so You look good. better except for your nail polish. Oh. That's lame. <laughs> I'm you should like, get rid of Jax. that. I loved that. I'm like, yes. But I mean, it's kind of true. It's definitely Tom, true. You're not aging the no. way I think you think you're aging. But it was also rude. And it is the I audacity. It. it is the hypocrisy of Jax Taylor, of all people, trying to take Tom Sandoval f- to task yeah. for infidelity and acting a fool like Jax out of everybody even Tom Sandoval and anybody else has been the worst and so you're gonna presume to fucking walk up in here and start taking him to task although because it's Tom Sandoval we love to see it I mean it's anybody will entertaining. do entertaining anybody yeah. will do I mean I thought it was interesting how um what's his face Jax is trying to call out Sandoval for not like fully taking accountability he's like dude all you have to do is just like bend the knee say you're sorry and just admit it like just be humble and like take it for what it is and Sandoval's like I am I am doing See? everything I can and he thinks he has I mean he really does while he's comparing himself to a mass murderer yeah and I'm like what the fuck dude you you are so deluded mm-hmm. it's crazy and Jax just keeps being like just do what I did bro just admit it bro and i'm like really dude 
you're still cheating on Brittany. Yeah, the rumors are still I mean, everywhere on those West Hollywood streets. Shut up. Yeah, you're not a paragon of virtue. And again, it's like anybody who like takes Tom Sandoval to task, like I appreciate that. But I mean, I can almost say, but not Jax. No. Like you are such a despicable piece of shit who yeah. treats your wife you treat your wife like shit we are covering yep. the valley if you haven't listened to our episode on that it's either coming out soon or you should go back and check it out but like you treat your fucking wife like shit and you want to waltz into tom tom and take tom's to task i was just like oh that's rich mm-hmm. that's rich the audacity it's so hypocritical but it's so entertaining it's fun <laughs> it's so it is fun great like him calling sandoval like you're me seven years ago i'm like well He's got a point, though. Yeah. Like, he's calling Sandoval out for what it is. And I like how Sandoval's just kind of got this blank stare on his face. Like, he doesn't even know what to do. Like, he's so wimpy and shrimpy. Like, he doesn't know how to... <laughs> he doesn't know how to deal with people calling him out for well, what he is. Well, he does is. tell Jax is, I'm not fucking apologizing to God. you, you fucking asshole. Yeah, that's like, it. You're the last person that can call me out on my bullshit with all the fucking bullshit you do. So you can get fucked. So I saw, like, in that moment, like, Sandoval and Jax from years ago, like, the fighting that they've done over the years. It's been perfect. So I could see Tom Sandoval being like, no, fuck you, though, which is fair. Like, we're, but we're having a conversation amongst garbage people. Yes. So fair is fair, fair. I don't know. No. It's all garbage. No. But you know Sandoval cried himself to sleep about that old comment you know he did <laughs> this dude who's like thinks he's so years hot. old oh my god 10 years older than what he is i think that's so great and it's true yes and he's probably worried about it oh totally you know he's botoxing too close to the that's sun why he's working out you know he's fucking probably on his journey to fillers yep you know he's working out as hard as he can yep. on that fucking elliptical or whatever it is he's doing he's like worried about it oh yeah and you should be because that's all you have to offer because you have not developed your inner world yes because yep. you're vapid vacuous yep. and we can see you <laughs> and you're old you look old you're aging i mean so is this the guy you're gonna be at 50 like we've what, yes we've seven years yes eight years is this who you're going to be we're not going to do any work this is what we're doing okay him and oh, jacks okay. both him and ja- that's what's so funny about they're gonna this. end up roommates again oh totally and that's what's so funny about this whole confrontation because i'm like you guys are both pieces of shit you're both fucking serial cheaters you're both clout goblins and total narcissists it's literally two people talking to each other in the like in the mirror it's so funny to me yeah i love it and that's how we end this episode <laughs> there's no preview t- for next week i know that was weird which was very weird i do know though that Jax and tom make up at that meeting like they're going to fight a little bit more and then they're going to make up. They're going to hug it out. Oh, okay. So we're going to see the resolution to that then. Yes. Okay. And then of course we see them in the after show. We've yeah. got Schwartz, Jax and Tom Sandoval and all fine. sitting together, like agreeing on things. And so clearly it's bro code again. Yeah. They're all shitting on Katie. <laughs> like of course. she's the one we target, I guess. God. And we have a enemy in common. Well, and I don't know why they just want to dog on, on Katie because she's just so beautiful. That's she why. She calls them out on their bullshit. Yep. That's why she yep. doesn't give them any quarter, any room to fucking wiggle None. out of it. She sees them for exactly who they are. And again, I say her um, her technique is not always perfect, which sure. she admitted in this episode. She like, did. this is the shit I got to work on is tone and delivery else? and delivery. Like, yep. I got to work. But she's right. Yeah, she is right. She's calling it correctly, which I love. Which we, we need. Yes, we because do. Because I don't know what happened to Lala. Like, I thought Lala was going to come into this season and tell the truth about what's been going on in the group. Like, she would fucking read Tom Sandoval. I thought she'd be the first one to be reading Tom Sandoval nonstop. Yeah. I thought Sheena, I mean, even Sheena, I thought she'd come in and do the right thing, but they're not. Nope. It's only Katie. Yeah. It's literally only Katie. Yeah. And Ariana a little bit, but even then she's like, I'm over this shit. She's like, I'm I'm not going to expend the energy because nope. I don't care about any of you people except for Katie. Yep. 100%. It's very interesting. I am liking this duality between Vanderpump Rules and mm. the Valley. And I'm okay. excited to see like the crossovers and how all of this stuff kind of mixes together. Yeah. I hope the Valley is crazy or gets crazy this season. I hope Vanderpump Rules kind of gets crazy. It seems like it from the previews with that black tie event, like maybe it'll I mean, get that's crazy. That's one event though. 
I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm not disappointed in this season because I feel like we're still in the Scandaval, yeah. post Scandaval era. So it's all interesting, but I just, I, I wanted it to be more dynamic, yeah. more bombastic, more drama-licious. I really, I was watching Tom Schwartz uh, yesterday and today, and I'm just like, he feels like he's really producing himself as yeah. the aw shucks guy, as like, you know, I'm just, I can't stay at your pool party, dude. Like, I don't want to be your wingman. It's this weird. kind of weird. When on any other day, he would have hung out. He would have stayed there. Yeah. Like, it doesn't feel authentic with him at all. Nope. So I'm just a little disappointed that it's not giving reality as much as it's giving TV. I mean, it's Bravo, though. Can you expect anything different? Like, yeah. Bravo I mean, I think a there's a lot like of this. shows. Like, if you were to be watching Summer House right now, I think there's a lot of actual drama from OG people who have been in the franchise for multiple years giving real drama in their lives Ooh. and so and i think we're seeing real drama but i i think we're seeing people trying to maneuver within it for their for um their chance to like get hot elevate get themselves yeah, yeah. Like get more of the pie like sheena is trying to elevate herself like right. what about me we see lala trying to play both sides to elevate herself whereas in summer house you just see people falling apart and then talking about <laughs> it like that's what i want yeah if only we could produce these shows ourselves. Yeah, I mean, yeah, maybe that's what we're working toward. Maybe. Who knows? If y'all subscribe to our channel. And our Patreon. And leave us <laughs> reviews and stuff. Maybe we can. 100%. Well, this was good. Any yeah. final thoughts on Vanderpump? Are you happy to see Jax? Are you happy with the way that it's going? So far, but I'm like, okay, I'm side-eyeing it. Like, there better be some drama. Yeah. There better be some shit going Don't down. Don't hold your breath. I want some fights. Well, maybe the value will provide. Yeah. Maybe like with both of them, we yeah. can get what we want. Yeah. All right, Beatrice. To conclude, is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons? Well, if you love our podcast, be sure to go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five star review. Bye. Thank you so much in advance. It really helps us grow the pod and become famous. That's right. Um, we will be back next week to talk Seeking Sister Wife, which, yes. by the way, is wiggity whack. It's like, lit. These people are nutso. Absolutely crazy. We will continue to be covering the Valley and Vanderpump rules. And until then, please never forget that we have nothing but love for you. And peace out. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye.